When we look at smoothbores and, and, a, and a basic introduction to smoothbores, there are really two factors that come to utilizing the smoothbore properly. One is the bore size and the second is the pressure that we apply to it. <clears throat> Generally speaking, you need to be guided or we should be guided by the thought process that we're not going to use a bore that is any greater than half the size of the discharge hose. So for instance, a one inch tip on a two inch hose line, a uh, inch and a quarter tip on an, uh, a two and a half inch line is generally speaking about the biggest uh, tip size that we want to go. The reason for that is that at 50 pounds nozzle pressure, which is what most hand lines that are smooth bores get pumped at, uh, as we start to open up the bore of that nozzle past that halfway mark, we really start to begin to lose velocity of the, of the stream that comes out the end of the nozzle. At that loss in velocity or loss of sp the speed of water movement creates a problem for us because one of the things that everybody loves about the smoothbore is that it's a hard hitting stream, it travels a distance, and it has the capability of, of penetrating. Um, so when we slow that water down by opening up that bore size, we lose some of that. Additionally, when we start to go beyond that halfway mark, we also lose back pressure within the line. So it gives the, it, it makes the line collapse more easily than, than even what it already does. We already know that one of the be great benefits about smoothbore is that we have lower overall discharge pressure, lower overall operating pressure, which is fantastic. Decreases the workload on the, on, the, on the nozzle team. But the problem with that is, is when we start to open up that bore past that halfway mark, we, we're creating problems for the nozzle team potentially because we're, we're creating the potential for more kinks. So when we talk about increasing the bore size, we're really talking about increasing the capability of our water flow. For instance, going from a, from a one inch tip to an inch and an eighth tip. The one inch tip at 50 PSI flows right around 210 gallons a minute. That inch and an eighth tip at 50 PSI has a capability of flowing 266 gallons a minute. Big jump in water delivery for a small increase in bore size. One of the, <clears throat> the second factor becomes pressure that we apply at the base of the nozzle. So when we start looking at the, the, the nozzle in general, we've got this, the size of the bore is our, is our first factor, and then the pressure that we apply or the pressure that we operate it at becomes our second factor. <clears throat> the, the accepted industry standard is 50 pounds at the tip. Uh, or, or 50 pounds at the base of the nozzle gives us proper reach, penetration, and, and water velocity through the line as through the bore size. Uh, that enables us to have that hard hitting stream that travels a great distance that penetrates through that black fire scenario, black fire condition as we're traveling down the hallway. The thing that you have to keep in mind is hand lines at 50 and anything that becomes a master stream or anything that's greater than 350 gallons a minute capable flow or that we are terming a master stream uh, is 80. And the way I would look at that or the way I would think about that is uh, anything that you're going to hold uh, or you're going to have somebody else hold, pump it at 50. Anything that you're going to mount, sit on the ground, tie off, pump from the top of the engine, pump from the aerial, pump it at 80. You're, you're creating a, a, a more safety conscious environment by reducing that, that pump pressure that's being held. Once you go above those recommended pressures, you really start to degrade stream quality and how it looks coming out the end of the nozzle. The, the, convert, the, under, the thing that you have to understand about that though is as we increase pressure, we also increase discharge volume. As we decrease pressure, we decrease discharge volume. So, the, the bore size and the, and the pressure they applied, they're directly correlated into ultimately us knowing our flow and, and what our flow is capable of out of this line. Once you reduce those pressures below those benchmarks though, again, we're going back to loss of reduction of water velocity and loss of potential knockdown power and potentially the generation of more kinks down the line unless you are diligent about managing those. So, if smooth bore's your thing, awesome. Uh, keep those little, little review for you, keep those things in mind, and uh, be safe.